Ladies, gentlemen, one and all, welcome to Spellforce Conquest of EO. Once again, technically. So, following the, um, the A Quick Look At video I did on this game, um, there was, shall we say, overwhelming feedback, and by overwhelming I mean two people, that said they would be interested in seeing this as a full series. Uh, given I'm having some... my internet is not really good enough to upload Dread Templar at a good sort of... Um, a good video quality, I'm jumping ship to this, which is um, a lot slower paced and therefore likely to be a file size that I can actually upload. So... Let's see, shall we? Um... Yeah, so I posted a poll, uh, when was it? Was it like Saturday? I think maybe Friday or Saturday. Basically saying, uh, do you want me to start from scratch or do you want me to continue from where the a quick look at video left off? And the majority of people said they wanted me to start again. So let's start again. Now, once again, uh, for those who haven't seen the A Quick Look At video, I will go over the absolute basics, but the majority of it I'm going to assume you already know based on the A Quick Look At video, or you have played this yourself, or you, I don't know, just already know because you've played these types of games before. Um, so yes, we have three, well, four technically selections. We've got the Alchemist, Necromancer, Artificer. Um, I am most familiar with the Necromancer, an artist of life in death. Harvest souls from the bodies of the fallen to rid your horde and flood the lands with your servants. You prefer big armies, but will happily sacrifice individual units. Yes, but that's who we're going to be playing, because I don't know if the people who told me to start again were expecting me to choose a different class, but literally this is... This is the only one that I've played, so we're going to stick with it. And uh, we're also going to stick with the Golden Fields, because these ones, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing hard difficulty. And I am, of course, going to be on Explorer. I mean, technically, I could go to Balanced, how the developers recommend the game to be played. Um, but... Again, I've not completed my first playthrough yet, so... Yeah. I mean... Nah, we'll go explore. It's easy, but not easiest. I'm sure I'll get comments asking me to restart on Balanced, but... We'll see. Zarak and Nor are renegade guardians revered by the Dark Races. Yeah, Zarak is um, Orc revered and Nor is Necromancers and let's um, Dark Elves I think also are a fan of Nor. Generating the world, this might take a while. Circle mages don't like you when you trespass into their domain. No, or well maybe they should stay out of mine then. Like, literally, I had um, in my other playthrough, not the a quick look at one, the, uh, the actual main playthrough I had going, um, I came across a rather unfriendly, um, friendly chap. He was a circle mage, and I had to kick his teeth in, which is a shame. I was trying to be nice to them all, but no, of course. Because I'm messing with the ore fire. I can't remember um, 
I can't remember his name to be honest. We'll come across him eventually. I imagine he's going to be just as hostile here as he is um, in my other playthrough. He had a lot of demons and um, constructs. Though, um, yeah, when I went to take on his actual tower, uh, I was kind of lucky because I had a lich and could just revive literally everything that he uh, he threw at me. Right, time for story time with Kaldaris again. When a message from your master told you he had discovered a way to channel the all fire and urged you to come to his tower, you quickly gathered your entourage and set out. The letter contained little more than his note a small flute, exquisitely carved and bearing your master's sigil. He seemed to fear running afoul of the circle of mages, the most powerful covenant of magic users on Eo. His tower now before you bears signs of a terrible battle having raged there. Go to the tower immediately. Whee! Technically, you can just go anywhere you want, but I feel there's no reason to go anywhere other than um, other than here for the first um, the first thing. The corpses and debris marking the fight inside the great hall of your master's tower fill you with grief for him. Instinctively, your hands go to the flute he sent you with his letter. You trace the fine carvings with your fingers, and memories of your time here flood your mind. Suddenly, the flute seems to hum and vibrate, and a small sound emanates from it. The, sh the sound morphs into a flute melody, and with it, shadowy f images begin to appear across the hall. Figures take form, becoming more solid, and taking the shape of two groups face each other, weapons drawn. You see your old master leading one of the groups. This must be the battle for the tower. Uh, I played the combat tutorial in the A Quick Look at, so let's just skip this. I already know what happened. Impressions of the fighting still play on your mind as you slowly walk up the dented stairwell, uh, stairway. The tower, damaged and deserted, still retains your master's presence somehow, willing you onward. Whatever happened here will not be forgotten. You are sure there is more to discover. Your master was always adept at hiding his secrets, but you are determined to uncover them. This is my tower now. You take stock. The entry hall's golden chandelier has been stolen and its soft carpets are gone. Your master's tower was not just attacked but also robbed, it appears. On closer inspection, there are several tracks out of the tower. Traces of torn fabrics and dropped cutlery lead to a goblin camp not far from here. Let's go punch them. And now we have our tower. Uh, right. Okay. So let's get started with the Necromancer's Crypt because quite frankly we're going to need it. That's our only way to make troops until we take over the goblin camp. We also have some remains and a vigorous soul. Alright, let's go punch some goblins. From the camp, you make out the loud and obnoxious squabbling of goblins. It appears they are fighting over loot from the tower, screaming at each other at the top of their lungs. Let's wait and watch. Because why fight uh, when we can just, you know, coerce them? When the goblins spot you, their screeches alarm the whole camp. They start running at you, weapons drawn. Conjure a display of your magic. The goblins stop their screaming just long enough to stare at you, then fall over one another, trying to flee the camp. Let them flee. Most of the goblins run from your troops, but one stays behind, looking at you with challenge in his eyes. May his great shaman of tribe 
Don't fears you. Learns great magics from Master. He points at one of the pieces of cloth sewn into his armor, showing you your master's emblem. You served my master. Yes, yes. We say use his things when rogue humans came. All the magical things. Keeps him right here. He turns to a burlap sap stuffed with all manner of garbage and looks puzzled. Or maybe some things are not here. Uh, goblins carried them away, maybe. Uh, I help you find things. Maybe great shaman. I got a Lizaglyph Bowman. Increased missile damage. Ooh, that's gonna be good. That'll be good for my uh, Necromancer minion. Uh, thanks, I guess. Though they flee a distance to avoid you, the goblins stop, still within sight of the camp, as if simply waiting for you to leave. Scouring the place, you find some objects clearly belonging to your master, and goblin-sized clothing with his emblem sewn into the fabric. By the looks of it, the goblins did indeed serve him. Perhaps they will serve me as well. So that's interesting, because if... Because I remember getting a different minion out of that before. I think I got some goblin archers. I guess I did it a different way to the way I normally do it. But, yes, I now own the camp, so we can now start recruiting goblins. I'm not going to yet, because uh, we are already at a gold deficit. Will you be quiet next door's dock, seriously? Alright, uh, so, something I didn't show off in the, um, a quick look at thing is that you can equip glyphs to your units. For example, there's a glyph Bowman. Now, either I can equip this to a minion for plus two missile damage, or I can use it in the Necromancer's Crypt to create something. What that something is, I can't remember. We'll have a look next turn. I'm not going to equip it just yet, so I can, uh, so I can double check. There's the Necromancer's Crypt. You wander the old, familiar rooms of the tower, lost in memories of your time here as an apprentice. The place was clearly searched, uh, searched through before the goblins ransacked it. Your master's crafting room has been depleted, most of the other chambers ravaged. Whoever did this left no stone unturned. Go to the library. Buried beneath a toppled staircase, uh, bookcase, in your master's gutted library, you find his old grimoire. Reverently, you open the heavy tome. Many of its beautifully illustrated pages have been torn out, but you still see bits and pieces of your master's illegible script. He was always secretive about his arcane research, often writing in code. Let's try to decipher it. You look for the first spells he taught you. Carefully flipping through the large pages, uh, carefully flipping the large pages to one of the bookmarks attached to the spine, you can indeed make out some of the basics. Others you can almost decipher. This needs further study. You gaze around the room, imagining a treasure trove of arcane knowledge hidden among the scattered scrolls and torn books. A lifetime of magical study at your disposal. I will not leave until I have recovered my master's knowledge. Right, Grimoire, what do we want first? Uh, to further my studies, experimentation will be required. A practical application of my theories will suddenly reveal new knowledge. In this case, it will be necromancy. If we chose either of the other characters, it would be like, um, Crafting other styles of minions other than undead. Uh, right, we are going to go for aid first. Uh, we are not going to be going for the all fly right away. We should, but we're not. Uh, and I do not want to prepare a spell yet. So, let's get a 
Let's see what this glyph gets us. Skeleton warriors. All right. So that I don't. They're quite good. They're quite useful. I like their model. Not the biggest fan of the shield. I prefer like a sort of death emblem on it, but yeah. And I prefer it to be purple, because you know, undead. Um. <sighs> Question is though. Do I want that? Or do I want... Um, do I want the plus two missile damage on my Necromancer minions? What do I do at the moment? 20. They do have Soul Catcher though. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to forgo the Skeleton Warriors. And I'm going to attach the Glyph. Once you've attached a Glyph, you cannot unequip it. So that is now gone forever from what I remember. Right, what's this? Uh, guard post. Needles hiring of soldiers when inside your domain. Well, it's not at the moment, so let's ignore it. And I find 10 gold in that treasure stash. Oh, the goblins are over there. Uh, I may have gone in the wrong... Hello. Who are you? Other than dead. You might lose some units. Nah, we won't. We'll be fine. I mean, <laughs> how how dangerous can two arsonists be? Uh, I'm going to regret saying that. Uh, right, okay. So, yes. Combat in this is very much like... Um, very much like any sort of um, Age of Wonders game. Uh, it all takes place on tiles, you control, uh, you have a certain number of movement points, uh, which is... here. So yeah, you have three actions you can make. So you can either move twice and attack once, uh, you can move and uh, defend, you can move and use an ability, or you can just use abilities. Some... Uh, some abilities will end your turn immediately. For example, if you attack but you still have three actions left, you will consume the extra action points to gain additional attacks. Uh, if you raise a corpse with one of the individuals that can do it, whether that's a hero or a lich, uh, that will also end your turn immediately. So you need to keep that in mind. There are also many different types of damage, so you have melee, obviously, you have missile, but you also have elemental damage. So, for example, uh, I don't think we've actually got an example here. Well, for example, these guys. These do... these have a fire attack. Elemental is just classified as one specific damage type. You do not have fire, frost, lightning, etc, etc. Um, elemental is tends it tends to be good versus things like undead and demons. Though, of course, some individual units may vary. Uh, you also have white damage, which is very good versus undead, and then you have uh, death damage, which. I'm not overly sure what that's meant to be good against. I've not come across anything that's specifically weak to it uh, from memory, but uh, I'm sure I will be corrected later. Uh, humans tend to be a little bit resistant to white damage because that is kind of... it's kind of holy in a way. Uh, this specific one is actually an Electro Ball, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, uh, with missile units, when you move them, you can, or most of them, you can actually see, uh, how much damage you're, or an estimate of how much damage you're actually going to do, because missiles are affected by range, 
and sight penalties. So, if you have a... you can see on the arsonists there, that one of them has a yellow eye and one of them has a yellow half eye. Now, the half eye means there is a sight penalty, so the necromancer's minions will do less range damage to them. The yellow eye, full eye, means there's no sight penalty, meaning they will do full damage as long as they are in range. Yellow eye means that they are going to suffer a range penalty because they are quite far away, meaning again they do less damage. And a green eye means they are in, uh, they are in range. They're in perfect range, or effective range, or whatever. So, you want to try and make sure you have a green eye, but of course that's not always possible, and sometimes it is better to just blink away from a distance, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. However, I don't want this at the front, because this suffers extra elemental damage, if I recall. Uh, no, I was incorrect. Though I still don't want it to die, so yeah, I'm going to have the goblins in front. And I'm going to have my necromancer minions here. I'm going to make my goblin shaman back here, because he only has 35 health and is squishy as hell. And then I'm going to force end turn to guard. Now, guard means that they get a 20% damage reduction, as you can see there, and they also exert a zone of control, meaning that if anyone was next to them and then tried to move, they would get an attack of opportunity. Yeah. They also retaliate against, uh, if they have actions remaining at the end of the turn, they do retaliate against anything that attacks them. Now, um, this uh, Goblin Shaman here has a heal. Now, that will end his turn if he does that. However, we cannot choose to only do two attacks with the Electro Ball and then do healing spores. So, it's probably better if we just use the healing spores now. However, it's probably actually even better if I uh, actually what, that gives me damage right yes it does because it also applies berserk shrooms do I want to take that or do I want to do the damage first and then heal I probably want to do the damage first then heal how much damage can this guy do? He can nearly... He can potentially kill off this... Uh, in fact, he can potentially kill off either of these because they are in range. They are in range. Uh, what about the Goblin Shaman? He can... Alright. Uh... Okay. So, I just activated Sock Cage on this guy, so that means he is definitely going to drop his soul when he dies. Also, my minions got confident, so their morale has gone up, or willpower as it's called in this. Uh, that means they do two extra damage. Now, uh, this guy can just outright kill this one. So, that's fine. Then, let's use... Uh, I said let's use Zekshrooms to heal him up, and then we should. Oh, we might not kill him, but I'm wanting to take the risk. Go. Gotcha. Good. So we took minimal damage. It's fine. It talks about the War of the Six Races, but this actually, um, this takes place sort of before the end of Spellforce 1, uh, because the Circle Mage Rowan is still alive. In fact, all the Circle Mages are still alive at this point in time. Uh, by the time of Spellforce 1, most of the Circle Mages, I believe, are dead due to the Convocation.
if you don't know Spellforce law, um, Convocation, if I remember correctly, is a kind of cataclysmic event where everything went wibbly and um, there was a big war and the continents all got horribly separated and yeah, now the only way to get from continent to continent is via portals, which uh, Rowan created. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, oh, what's this? What are your next steps? The destruction of your master's tower must mean he uncovered something of the Allfire's secrets, which the Circle guards fiercely. You can restore the contents of his grimoire, but his tower needs rebuilding too. And if the Circle is behind his disappearance, you must expect them to come for you as well. Maybe they know of your discovery already. For those who have never played Spellforce, I will uh, go into what exactly is the Circle. The Circle of Mages, a covenant of the most powerful Magi on Eo. They supposedly protect all practitioners of magic, furthering knowledge of the mystical arts, but they are also the only living beings to have begun to master the Allfire's might, having recently discovered the key to its might on the faraway continent of Shu. Now, they bar others from protecting the Allfire's immense power, claiming it is too dangerous for the uninitiated to handle. I will have to tread carefully. Taking proper stock of your master's laboratory, you find very little more than empty vials and containers that have, like everything else, been searched through. It was certainly not the work of goblins. You can make out tracks of a cart, leading to a nearby hamlet you passed on your way here. The villagers plunder the tower after it was abandoned, too. I suppose I should check in with them as well. And there is the hamlet. That's our next quest objective. But... I feel like going and punching some goblins. So I will do that in a minute. Which is kind of what I like about the exploration difficulty. Uh, because... Yeah. You can pretty much take things at your leisure. Uh, let's begin researching Enchanted Wisp. Because we are going to start doing all fire stuff soon. Uh, also, I want a ghoul. I want to start a second army early so I can start exploring around. Do, 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 do. It's goblin punching time. How far can you move? You can move up to there. there Goblin archers. Uh, they're gonna have decent range. Uh, should probably hide in the trees. Let's hide in the trees. Uh, you go over there. You go over there. Oi! Don't stay on that side of the river, you git. Alright. Fine. See how it is. Uh, are you undead? Can you actually heal? Yes. Okay, so undead units uh, can't actually heal uh, outside of combat. They have to heal via. Um, you. Uh, yeah, they have to heal via. Uh, what was it called? Going? Uh, well, magical means. You can use either certain abilities, or you can use um, <sighs> what's it called? I can't remember. Was it consume or something? Consume corpse. 
uh, which is an ability that you can cast in combat to, well, consume a corpse and heal it for 30. So, heal the um, cast for 30. There are also magical spells that you can use. Uh, your heroes get access to them at uh, times. Once we get the necromancer, I'll show you. Right, level ups. We have level ups. Uh, Goblin brawlers, you're going to be on the front line. You need health. Uh, although six plus six damage against units with armored isn't bad. But uh, we'll take it. Uh, Goblin Shaman, give you white damage. Uh, Necromancer minions cannot level up, so yep, they're uh, stuck as is. And in the ruins, I found a Twitching Eyeball, which is lovely, uh, which is two life essence, which we cannot use at all. So that's basically a selling item. And gold. Uh, so yes, we can go to inventory, we can... So that's for three gold. This is where someone who, with more experience than me, uh, tells me that I have just screwed up, and that's actually really good. Right, get the mana stash, and then we'll go to the hamlet. Uh, show them we mean. Uh, um. The village's inhabitants eye you with an air of hostility when you arrive. Children are called inside. Some of the villagers arm themselves with tools and sticks. Your band regards them cautiously in return. A burly, back-haired man, brandishing a cudgel, steps forward and says, There is nothing for you here. Show them you mean no harm. The villagers barely budge, but after a moment, one of their elders steps forward hesitantly. We were afraid you would bewitch us. The old wizard's apprentice thought they would come after him and take back the items he gave to us. We wanted to trade them in the city to buy clothes for our children. I have no intention of harming you. Let's trade. Trade? But you... We trade the eldest stares at you slow to collect himself and calls out to his people the mage's troops are here to trade as those around him begin to relax he leans in to squint at you you're not playing a cruel trick on us are you you really wish to trade for our goods yes trade is that so hard to fathom it's just, we, we humbly apologize for our behavior. Now, what do you wish to trade for the goods? I perform a few cantrips for a few ingredients. The villagers agreed to trade you some of their harvests for a few mending spells, though they seem uncertain about the results. Eh, sounds decent. As you leave, you think about the apprentice the villagers kept speaking of. Perhaps you can find them. They may be able to shed some light on your master's fate. And we don't actually have any uh, crafting slots at the moment, but I think we can make, if I wanted, Charge crystal, a laser arcane soul. Uh, yeah, I can make an undead mage. I should be also be able to make a warrior. Or well, actually, I can't make that because um, that's too much life. I can nearly make it. Uh, I can make. That for a skeleton warrior. Uh, 
that will give him pack tactics. Uh, <sighs> actually, let me just do do it this way, and then do that. Then I can make the undead mage that way rather than being like really convoluted. So that's one mana upkeep, so giving mana affinity, which gives plus two mana per day to a undead mage, is actually pretty useful. Uh, Alright. Let's uh, end the turn there. The books start flying! Your master's missive spoke of an all-fire source he discovered not far from here. Now that you have established yourself in this tower, it is time to search for it. You eagerly scour his scribblings for any hint to the source's location. It must be close to the tower, else your master would not have set up his abode here. Eventually, you find the location noted in your master's grimoire. It is not even a day's walk from the tower, but how to access it? As many have found out to their detriment, no mortal may touch the all fire without being consumed. The circle only recently discovered how to master its power, and they will not teach their secret to anyone. But your master once described a theory of his, of a magical conduit, by summoning an ethereal creature to meld with the all fire source, and retaining the connection to it after after it has been consumed. You may be able to channel some of the all fire's power into yourself. A wisp may do the trick, an ethereal being often used by mages as scouts or messengers. Let's summon one and try. Ooh, that's uh, even closer than I had. Uh... Ooh, that's actually a pretty good place. Because, I think... <sighs> How far does the reach, does the domain reach on that? Is it just here? Or was it two? If it was two, that would reach the guard post, meaning I can get constant access to soldiers, and it'll give me the ritual altar for three mana every turn for 12 turns. Uh, each turn I mark will appear on a random position in the battlefield. If you can enter the turn on this position, they receive TR as touch. That's only if there's battle takes place there, though, so that's. Uh, Uh, right. What are we doing? Uh, I actually kind of want to go clear out that mine now, to be honest. Uh, let's start sending my, uh, let's start summoning that mage. And then we will, um, yeah, and then we'll make another army out of that, but for now let's just send you um, having a look around. <coughs> Celebration. Construction site grants faster and 10% cheaper room crafting when inside your domain. Well, that's not going to affect us yet. There's no way to get that inside my domain as of the moment. Uh, also, let's go cut out the mine. Ooh, tier two mortal human soldiers. They've got white resistance. Um, they got plus one speed. Okay. It's only seventy three power, which of course means they're going to slaughter us. Because I'm going to underestimate. Going? Going? Oh dear. Hey, where are you going? Okay, you can attack now. Sorry. No soul trap. Uh, you can go there, so go there. They are resistant to that damage, but... Eh. Ooh, I broke my armor. That's rude. 
Minus 50% armor, yeah, so they'll do extra damage to me. Uh, let's try and soul trap. Oh, let's use Berserk Shrooms first. Oh, he explodes, sorry. And then let's murder them and hope to get their soul. We did not. Still a chance that they dropped it, but uh, we'd have to be very lucky. We did not. Unfortunate. Oh well. Your soul is not mine. Ooh. More arsonists. Well, we can't be having that, can we? Hello, sir. You exist. That means that uh, I automatically hate you, and now you must die. Oi! I said fire to my goblins. It's rude. Uh, Alright, let's set you up there. Set you up there. And hopefully, uh, he will go there. And uh, yeah, then he can be. Um, he can be swamped by both. Uh, I'm actually tempted to just. Yeah, stick my necromancer means here and then fire at him. Uh, you, on the other hand, I'd rather you were in cover. Or, well, something resembling cover, anyway. Ah, oh, there was a space there. I did not realise that. Oops. Alright. Uh, right, so trap them. Or not. God damn it. And use Berserk Shrooms. Let's flank them, and murder. And you cannot attack because you are at the hand points. And they ran right into you. That was silly of them. And I still got no soul. Curses. Ooh, there's a shape of secret over there. Remember that for later. And there's a thieves' den here. Enables hiring of thieves. Reputation with unscovered faction changed. I'm going to guess that's the village over here. At least it's normally over there. Uh, nothing. Wibbly happened? An inn greets you with the smell of grilled meat and a simple tune played upon the fiddle. There seems to be a wedding in progress. The whole village has joined in the festivities. Houses are adorned with garlands of flowers and everyone is dressed in bright colours. Let's join. The bride and groom, a young couple who are clearly in love, are receiving many presents and performances. We can either give them some coin, or we can have the dead do a dance. You know, I get the sneaking suspicion that might slightly upset the party. Let's give them some gold. The young couple thanks you for your generosity, and the village elders nod approvingly. They all insist on you staying for the feast, with the bar turning up a loot, uh, tuning up a loot to get the evening underway. I got plus 20 with a young scud faction, probably a city. I imagine if I did the necromancy thing, uh, I would lose reputation. Uh, we'll stay a little longer then. Come one, come all. The bard grins at the crowd. Will it be a tale of joy for the happy couple? Or a story of fear to rouse the blood and excite the spirits? A happy tale, the groom calls back. No, no, his beloved taps him gently on the arm to the laughter of many. Let's give ourselves, let's give ourselves more reason to drink. No, we want a happy story, damn it. Uh, although, excite the spirits. That sounds kind of amusing. The 
bard. Oh, the bard is a her. Oops, I, I had did a male voice for the bard. Uh, sets down her loot, holding her hands up high. On a dark summer's night, not unlike tonight, a nobleman threw a splendid party. He had thrown many such a party, where every guest was asked to perform for the others. Artful or silly, joyous or dramatic, each performance was cheered on by the crowd, except one at this celebration. A local baron, an evil man, and a practitioner of the dark arts used his performance to put a curse on the entire room. The laughter and cheering that had made the nobleman so much more popular than the baron would never cease. Some say you can still hear it today from the ruins of his manor. Some say if you ever go there, you will forever be a guest to their merriment. What a fascinating tale. And, funnily enough, that is actually kind of... That's kind of the thing. There is a uh, there is a manor over here. I don't know if it's related to this, but, uh, yeah. It is actually, uh... It is a thing. Uh, alright. And we circle around. Probably circle around. Water under the bridge, but there's village gossip. Well, there's a village, so yeah, we'll head there next turn. Uh, you go grab that manor. Week of the Guardians. Travelling is blessed by the Guardians, as many seek to visit nearby temples. All your units have plus one world, world map movement. Cities and shops have new inventory. And books start flying on the tower. Ah, uh, there's the apprentice. Not far from your tower, you spot a hooded figure watching you from a crop of trees. Is the circle already aware of your presence here? Danger may be closer than you expected. You know the local militia holds a watchtower not far away. Perhaps you could acquire help there. That is a mild concern. Alright, let's get a skeleton warrior with a feral soul. Uh, for pack tactics, I mean, we'll never actually probably be able to use pack tactics, but you know what? We'll take it. Uh, well, in that case, then, we need to get back to the tower because we're about to be attacked by a circle mage. And there's the city of Lyraine. Lyraine, the ever-bustling city of golden fields, holds many busy markets and shabby alehouses. It is a lively town that thrives on fertile crops. The region has been unfortunately plagued by pests in recent months, but you can still smell an abundance of wheat in the markets, in the form of a variety of delicious baked goods. And yet, sadly, they did not make any donuts. Worth a visit if I have the coin. Uh, which I... I mean, I do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hire any workers yet. If I can hire some workers, that'd be useful. But I do kind of want, want to rush back to the tower. Yeah, I'm going to rush back to the tower. I expect death soon. And let's summon a wisp. And let's research. Uh, not fear. Uh, da -da 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 deadly weapons. Let's get death march because it's only 20. You go grab that mana. Uh, you stay at the tower for a minute. Might get some goblin archers. Also, why am I suddenly 
Plus one from locations. Ah, because I cleared out. Mm -hmm. I did that a while ago, but I only had two minus two as of last turn, didn't I? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I can get all the way to the Mr. Outpost now. Okay. On your travels, you have constantly felt eyes on you, like someone is always watching. Now, a notice has appeared, warning of ghosts with glowing eyes that appear of night. It warns everyone to stay indoors. We should look into that. Glowing eyes in the night. Alright. Some soldiers loiter in front of the watchtower, but there isn't even a proper guard posted. At the sight of your approach, a few of them do get up, unsure on their feet, and obviously more than a little drunk. I got plenty of magic. The guards clap and laugh at your magical displays, watching in wonder as your cantrips fill the air with all manners of conjurations. You promise them a full belly and good ale, and they happily join you. Simple minds are so easy to impress. You know you should be careful. The locals probably won't look kindly on you using magic to lure away their protection. For now, though, you are glad for the extra soldiers. Uh, yeah, I lost some reputation with my rain, but I did get, like, 20 earlier, so I'm not overly frost. Right, you can join the mage. And yes, let's get some goblin archers. So we'll have a mage, an archer, uh, the militia, and a uh, stabby skeleton. <laughs> and that should be good. Alright. Uh, I suspect that next turn is going to pop a major event. So I am going to call it a part here. How far did I actually get? Uh, it was two days, two days ahead in the uh, previous recording. All right, so yes, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed it. And until next time, I have been Goldaris. Goodbye.